Nestled within steep hills and narrow streets, North Beach is San Francisco's most European-feeling neighborhood. While the rest of San Francisco seemed to grind to a halt under the shutdown orders, the people and places of North Beach never fully stopped churning. Wow, what a view. Right? It's oh. no joke, huh? We get a little bit of everything here. Like, I can see Chinatown. Mm -hmm. Got Knob Hill, Russian Hill, North Beach, the wharf, the bridge. It's, it's beautiful. It's not just the bridge, it is the Golden Gate Bridge. Right, it's like one of the most famous bridges in the world or something. <laughs> During the pandemic, it's been kind of special because it's almost like the, the beat didn't stop here. It like hiccuped for a second and then they're like, well, this is North Beach. This has always been North Beach. We got to keep the music going and they yeah. have. I'm excited to learn about what they did differently. Mm -hmm. How are these businesses still around? And these are businesses that have been around for decades. Yeah. I'm excited to just have a good time. I have a feeling we are definitely going to do that. With clients such as Carlos Santana and Tom Waits, Al Rabaya of Al's Attire has cemented himself as the number one place to go for unique bespoke clothing. With his dog Pepper, Al sat down with us to discuss how his shop weathered the pandemic and where he sees the future of North Beach heading. Hey! Hello there! Hello, there. Hello man. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Come Good on to in to the shop. Tell us about yourself and this amazing business. We depend a lot on um, the custom business, the, the suit, the bridal industry. Whether you're a musician, a bartender, or you need a size 17 high heel, six inch pumps, you know. Which I do. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what we're about. It's been difficult for a lot of people, but I know you've had some specific hardships with the pandemic. What's it been like making clothes during this whole thing? We never closed. The big difference was uh, I lost my crew. And the first two weeks, phone calls were ringing and, um, you know, 90% of the calls were cancellations of the order. Part of the business has been trying to embed yourself within the neighborhood. People still needed tailoring. They still needed shoe repair. And everyone has to see Pepper, so we're, <laughs> you know. Don't you have a, a line of coats you did during the pandemic to fight the virus? Is that it what it was? was? Uh, well, it was sort of by accident. Um, you know, having the pandemic uh, um, started cleaning out the closets. And we have a lot of these old curtains and, and bed sheets that were um, their characters. DC, Marvel, they're all from the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. And we started doing this uh, baseball jacket style with the original fabrics, and then we called it the Fight the Virus Collection. And no two are alike. And I had these bed sheets when I was a kid. Yeah, that's from 1984. Then, yep, I had these. So you're sheets. starting to date yourself. <laughs> I know. Me and my brother <laughs> had these, we had matching ones. What does the future look like for you? Well, the, the, the future, I, it, it, there's no way but up. You have to understand that I grew up in the city. Growing up in San Francisco, we went through the Harvey Milk, George Moscone, the Jim Jones Guayana murder. I really had no doubt that the pandemic is part of what happens within the cycle of things. When you go through your formative years in San Francisco, you can get through a lot. And uh, talking to my kids and stuff, you know, that's just, that's just San Francisco. Next in North Beach was Columbus Cafe. This no-nonsense bar features a pool table, photo booth, and souvenirs collected from its 84-year history. Becca Woods Kennedy shared the story of how she and two other Columbus Cafe bartenders banded together to buy the historic watering hole right before the pandemic shut the world down. You guys close in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You took ownership of this like right before the pandemic? Man, it turned like one of the best days of our lives into a nightmare. Closed escrow 26 days before the pandemic. 
26 days. It must have been really hard. It's a little bit defeated, but this community thrived more than any neighborhood in the city. The nice thing about North Beach is, is we're kind of like a square block area and we're all friends. The second our doors closed, I started a thread with all 20 of us. We were meeting, we were like, what can we do? When can we do it? What's working, what's not? And I think that that's the one thing that really helped everybody survive a lot better in this neighborhood. And it was just the communication, it was a huge thing. This is like such a union town for so long. And North Beach was such a union neighborhood. I loved going in there and seeing like all the old uh, stuff. It's cool you, got, you still got in there. I think that the reason that Paul and Joe Marino wanted to sell to us is so they could keep it going the way it was. And, and you know, for example, we have a picture of Joe from the Marin Athletic Club when he was 19 years old. He's 82 now. We've kept it alive, but just like refreshed it. And I think that's a big part. You know, people come in, they still get to see those pictures and keep it the way it is. So when the lights come back up, what do you think it's going to be like in North Beach? I think it's going to be like after the Prohibition. I think it's going to be crazy. I just think it's going to be better than ever, and I think that we did it right, and I think that it's going to make a huge difference, the reason that we went about the way we did. And people are going to be happy. To I'm that. excited. Cheers, back. guys. I'm glad yeah. to see you guys. Our final stop of the day was Washington Square Park. As restaurants closed their doors during the lockdowns, another industry was forced to halt along with them, live music. And in North Beach, most of the live music that disappeared was jazz. Omar Aran, a jazz musician and educator, came up with the idea for the Bay Area Jazzmobile. What up, what up? How you guys doing? Hi. Hey, Stuart. Hey, what's going on? Hello. Good to see you. The Bay Area Jazzmobile. Tell me about it. What's going on? The Bay Area Jazzmobile is modeled after the Jazzmobile in New York City, which ran for about four decades. The idea is to bring jazz directly to communities. And thanks to Mario and jazz in the neighborhood, these musicians are guaranteed a fair wage. And what's Jazz in the Neighborhood? Well, jazz in the Neighborhood is a nonprofit that I started in 2013. We pay 150 per musician per gig, and then an extra 10% of the total for the leader. When we put that out, that's one of the best gigs in town. Our mission is to obviously raise that and make it make it even better. How did the, the community react getting to come out here and just hear you jam? Oh, the reaction has been amazing. I think people were starved for live anything. The musicians had gigs to look forward to, but also North Beach has been a, a hub for jazz for a long time. We were very well received, yeah. you know, by neighbors, by merchants. And the, the quality and the level of performance is really high. North Beach and the Fillmore and Bayview, I mean, those would be the places really the, the cultural legacy of the music has always been part of the action. Yeah. It's a vibe. Yeah. Just the fact that we can offer free jazz concerts to anyone who's coming by, walking in the park, is enlightening for, for everyone, I believe. The opportunity we have to bring jazz to people who might not be able to go to a jazz club, people who are elderly, kids. The, the fact that we can expose them to jazz is super important because the music really is for everyone. Yeah. And the more people and the more generations are exposed to the music, the more healthy a scene we'll all have. The trauma was, was severe, but what we're doing is maybe a little bit of optimism and light you know, for, for everyone involved. So how'd you like our day in North Beach? I loved it. <laughs> I can't wait for the next one. I it, loved it. It was amazing. Uh, you know, coming here, being out here in the open without a mask on, hanging out on this bench, I mean, those are things I took for granted at first. Mm. So it's good to come here and really feel like, you know, you're in the city and, and, and there's just a bustle again. You know, we're here still and I mean, we got this, we're North Beach. It's just a bump in the road for us and, and we, we've been through things before and we're just gonna, keep being badass, and they have, and the world's starting to open back up, and here we are, things are beautiful. Definitely, North Beach is a resilient neighborhood within a resilient city. Hell yeah, <laughs> and we got jazz. We got jazz. While it had its fair share of dark times, overall, North Beach and its businesses barely missed a beat. Music stopped, but then it started again on wheels. Bars dried up, but then cocktails to go were born. Pandemic fashion morphed into sweatpants forever, only for an epic line of comic book jackets to rise from the ashes. It may look different than it used to, but North Beach is back, and it ain't going nowhere.